Dr. Papillardo, my question to you, um, you know, often I talk about Star Trek or Star Wars or Men in Black, but what you're doing reminds me of uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey, and, you know, our, our mission at that point to get to Jupiter. So explain to me, um, in this uh, investigation study of Europa, uh, what are the, I mean, what do you really, what do you see already, and what do you expect to see uh, from this mission? Sure, let, let me preface by saying I'm a big Trekkie, influenced the veteran <laughs> here. And, and our Europa science team of, of about 130 people we have as our, our mascot, our totem, a giant monolith that we towed around <laughs> to our meetings. Actually, we have three now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have tantalizing hints from the Galileo mission about what Europa is like. Uh, there, at high resolution, we have precious little data. We have one six meter per pixel image. We have uh, uh, 10 meter per pixel images that you can count on your hands and toes to get an idea of what Europa is like. And so this creates this picture of what we think it's like. A ice shell probably about 20 kilometers thick uh, above a salt water ocean and then the rocky mantle below. But you know, right, right now it's kind of a uniform picture. Whereas any world, you explore in more detail, and then you find out how it varies from place to place. We've seen this happen with our understanding of Mars, where we first thought it was a cratered ball because we saw the cratered part of it, and then, then we started understanding more and more. And now it's at the outcrop scale we see differences. So we're going to understand how Europa works uh, as a world. We're, we're kind of in our level of understanding that we were before plate tectonics on Earth where we don't really get how all the little pieces we see at the global scale fit together, and we're going to find more little pieces as we explore with the Europa Clipper. Thank you.